U.S. vehicles get older and bigger as the economic environment, availability of cars, and consumer preferences change. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Well, Liz, according to recent reports, cars on the road are getting older than dirt, as <laughs> some might say. According to the S&P Global Mobility Report, the average age of cars and light trucks on the road in the U.S. is now 12 and a half years old, more than three months older than the 2022 average reported just a year ago. True, but I'm betting we have quite a few viewers with older cars, and I'm guessing they love them. I think so, too. Yep. If I just described you, let me know what you've got in our comment section below. Now, the reported average age of vehicles in use in the U.S. has continued to increase for six straight years. It's easy to verify the truth of this just by taking a road trip and looking at the vehicles around you. I'm noticing a pretty big variety of cars on the road these days, and I love seeing the older stuff too. If you look at this graphic on the screen now, you can see that the average age of passenger cars is actually 13.6 years, while light trucks and SUVs are 11.8 years. The combined average is 12.5 years, and as you said, that's more than three months over the 2022 average we reported on. It's interesting to me that passenger cars on average are older than light trucks, SUVs, and crossovers by about two years. And of course, the electric vehicle's age averages are much younger than these, but that's largely due to the fact that so many of them are relatively recent entrants into the car market. Naturally, supply chain issues were still having an effect in early 2022, slowing the sale of new vehicles in the first half of the year. And in the second half of the year, another factor kicked in. Consumer demand slowed in response to inflation and climbing interest rates, not to mention uh, sky-high car prices. Right. This year, the average price and payments for new vehicles has remained high. Todd Campo, Associate Director of Aftermarket Solutions at S&P Global Mobility, says this combination of factors has encouraged consumers to hold on to their current vehicles longer or purchase a used one, saying either of these choices contributes to the aging of the fleet. This is the largest single-year increase in the average age of the U.S. fleet since 2008. Bottom line, there's more vehicles staying on the road for 20 years or more than ever before, and sometimes even having three or four successive owners. So much for the one owner car, right? Sure. Back in 2008, the average age of vehicles in use fell because of a declining demand for new vehicles. In 2022, retail and fleet sales of new light vehicles in the U.S. dropped to 13.9 million, 8% down from 2021, and the lowest levels recorded in over a decade. Todd Campo also says, we expect 2023 is going to come back toward normal, but I still think we're going to be challenged throughout this year to reach what's been the norm. What's the norm he speaks of? Somewhere between 15.5 million and 17 million sales. I don't think we'll get there this year, but signs point to 2024 likely getting back to near that range. Now, Liz, I happen to know that you're not too bummed out to be seeing cars getting older on the road. (laughs) Several times over the past several years, you've purchased vehicles that are older, and one of your trusty current runaround vehicles happens to be an 04 Mercury Grand Marquis. (laughs) Yes. It was my dad who actually got me started liking that vehicle. When I was still living at home, the Grand Marquis was his vehicle of choice. So he took it around a lot, and often it was to take me fishing. So lots of good memories, good times surrounding those really big (laughs) box-style Mercury Grand Marquis for me. I should say so. I'm curious what older vehicles our audience members are still driving and what older vehicles they prefer over the newer stuff out there. I have to say I actually enjoy a vintage vehicle going down the road, especially when the owner's taken really good care of it and done an awesome job of restoration. Model T's are always cool, but what about the 57 Chevy Bel Air that's nicely restored? Or from the same year, the Chevy Corvette or that Ford Thunderbird, some Mm -hmm. pretty timeless vehicles there. For now, it's getting into that time of year where we get to start seeing more of those older cars on the road again. You know something, there are cars from the more recent years and can even be as much as 30 years old, all original and still running like a champ like this 1993 Honda Accord with 132,000 miles on it. Still looking fresh and new. Some people just know how to take care of their cars. The car pictured here was featured on Tyson Hughie's YouTube channel. If you're interested in or have a passion for older cars, stop in and give Tyson a visit. Back on this current story, S&P Global Mobility expects more than 14.5 million new vehicles to sell in the U.S. this year. The revival of new vehicle inventory will apply downward pressure to the average age growth rate as more new cars enter the market. Nevertheless, S&P Global Mobility expects more than 74% of U.S. light vehicles to be older than six years and a number of vehicles aged 6 to 14 to grow by about 10 million in 2028. 
For now, older vehicles on the road are boosting the U.S. vehicle service industry. S&P Global Channel Forecast estimates that revenues of the U.S. light-duty aftermarket grew by about 8.5% in 2022 and may grow by 5% or more again in 2023. U.S. consumers' increasing preference for light trucks, SUVs, and crossovers, which are typically more costly to maintain than cars, has also been a booster for the service industry. S&P Global Mobility expects the total number of passenger cars in use in the U.S. to drop below 100 million for the first time since 1978 within the next two years. We just recently did a show covering how the sedan is is making a comeback, but by 2028, based on current trends, 70% or more of vehicles in use in the U.S. may be light trucks, SUVs, and crossovers. Increased demand for crossovers is driving growth in that category. And on the EV side of equation, for obvious reasons, we have a very different story. Yeah. The average age of BEVs in the U.S. is 3.6 years, down from 3.7 last year. New BEV registrations increased by about 58%. According to S&P Global Mobility Estimates, but BEVs continued to drop out of use slightly faster than other vehicles, with about 6.6% of BEVs sold from 2013 to 2022 are already no longer in service. That's meaningful. I'm going to wrap up today's show with a quick reminder for returning viewers or for you new ones just joining us for the first time that this year, coming soon, we are assisting with a major launch of an all-new hassle-free car buying process. So to make it easier for you, if you haven't done this already, and for us, we posted a Google Form questionnaire for you to quickly and easily sign up for a notification for when it goes live. Your response automatically loads into a database for us making it easy to see where things are at. There's been such a big response, and yes, it's very flattering to see so many of you getting as excited as we are about this. And yes, just a heads up, when you complete the waitlist notification form, there's a question at the end that we'd love to hear your feedback on, so please don't skip it. The question reads, with regards to the current car buying process, please tell us what you like, don't like, how you view the current car buying process, or any other things you wish to see brought to life with respect to creating the ultimate car buying process that would make you say, now this is how I want to buy a car every time. If you signed up early when we first announced the coming new car buying process, please find the link to resubmit your information. You can easily find the link either in the comment section below the video or on our YouTube community page or right on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Thanks in advance for doing such a great job of helping us strategically align with you the launch of the new hassle-free car buying process. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, it's very important that you don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future announcements. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. If you're one of the newest subscribers, we welcome you. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers for coming back and to all of our longtime subscribers out there. You guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.